When building an online game, we actually need to build two programs, a client and a server. To accomplish this, we will have three categories of libraries. Libraries that are used only by the client, libraries that are used only by the server, and libraries that are used by both the client and the server. Whenever we add a new package, we will often be faced with the question, which executable needs this package? Let's look at a few examples. Because our render and asset packages depend on external libraries such as OpenGL, this will make them less portable to containerization frameworks such as Docker. We will keep these as client-only packages and ensure that our server never imports them. Next we have a few packages such as Tilemap, PGIN, and MMO. Each of these holds logic that is used by our game loop which is simulated on both the client and the server. We will categorize packages like this as common. We don't have these now, but eventually we will need to talk to databases and other servers. The client should never need to do either of these tasks, so we will categorize these as server libraries. In the past episodes, we've been slightly disorganized. In the Tilemap package, we wrote some OpenGL-dependent rendering code so we will move this to the rendering package. Also, we've been putting some gameplay logic, such as our tilemap generating code, into our client package. We will move this to our base MMO package. Okay, so in our main MMO project, I'm gonna add a new file to the render package called tilemap.go. Then from our favorite text editor, which is Emacs by the way, we are going to open this file. MMO, let me resize some things. So we put in our engine, tilemap, tilemap.go. We can open our render one, render slash tilemap.go. So now we will declare it as part of the render package. And then I'm going to copy over the uh, pixel imports because this is going to be the tilemap renderer. Okay, now we can declare our tilemap renderer struct. And in here I'll put a sprite sheet. And that'll point to our base uh, asset sprite sheet object. That'll just be useful when we need to pull sprites out. We're also going to create a single batch, which represents a batch for the entire tile map. And then we'll have a mapping from uh, every tile type to the sprite that represents it. So we'll use this when we need to rebatch our tile map to the batch object. We'll, we will use the uh, map tile to sprite. And then I'll also write a uh, constructor for this. And I'm basically just going to pass all of the uh, data types in and pass them directly to the struct. Then I'm going to add one to do here, or rather, let's call it a note. And just that we currently are assuming that all of the uh, sprites in the tile to sprite map share the same sprite sheet. Next, we're going to write a few functions for our tile map render. Specifically, specifically, we'll have a clear function, which is going to clear the batch. And then we'll have a function called uh, batch, which will take in the uh, runtime data structure for the tile map. And it'll basically rebatch it into the batch object. So both of these together is, is useful. So sometimes we, sometimes we may need to clear our batch, and then uh, other times we may need to redraw our batch. So in the clear function, uh, we'll just do r.batch.clear to clear it. And then for the batch function, I'm just going to copy uh, from the old tilemap go file to the new tilemap go file in here. And then we can delete that one from the old file. And then one trouble here is that uh, the tiles array uh, is no longer uh, accessible to us. And that's because it's private in the tile map package, but in the render package, we need access to it some way. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to write some getter functions to get the width, the height, and each individual tile uh, from the tilemap.tilemap package struct. So we can rewrite our for loop for the x variable up here. Uh, we'll just do uh, x equals zero, x less than t dot width. We'll write that function in the future then x plus plus, we can delete the old one, and then we'll write the one for the y variable, y equals zero, y is less than height, and then y plus plus, and then we can delete the old one. Then we can replace the direct axis with a getter function, which will do just get x, y. And then when we do our draw, we're gonna to draw to the r.batch instead of the t.batch. Also, we're also gonna return a uh, boolean from the get function, and that'll indicate if we were able to actually look up that tile so, and then if we aren't able to look up that tile, then we'll just continue the for loop. And this might, this case might happen if we uh, access outside of the bounds of the tile map. And then we will look up the sprite with our r.tile2 sprite map that's stored in our tile map renderer. And then if there's an error there, we're just gonna panic because that should never happen. I.e. all of the tile types should be, should have some sprite for them. And then we're gonna migrate to using that sprite object that we just looked up. And I think that should do it for this function. Next, we'll copy over the draw function from our tile map package and change it to use the tile map renderer. 
Uh, now we've used a few extra imports inside of our render package. So I'm going to add those now. Specifically, we need to, add, need to access the tile map package uh, and also the asset package to get our uh, sprite sheet uh, data type. Now back in our tile map package, uh, let's write those accessor functions. So we'll start with the width function. In here, we'll just return the length of the tiles. Next, we can write the height function. That's very similar. Uh, I'm just going to index zero here. Uh, this is slightly dangerous, but as long as we set up our data properly, it should be no issue. But I will write it to do here uh, that we do assume that uh, the tile map is square because we're indexing on the first uh, index there, and also that it's kind of instantiated. Next, we'll write the getter function. Uh, and that'll just return the tile and the bool, or, or a bool to indicate if we were able to get that uh, tile. So we'll write an if statement to catch all of our errors. And then uh, just to go through all the errors, we have uh, x is less than zero would be an error. Uh, if x is greater than the length of the tiles, that would be an error. And then for the y variable, if y is less than zero, that's an error. And uh, if y is greater than the uh, length of that particular uh, column, that would also be an error. And then for this, we'll just return the default values for a tile and then the value false to indicate we weren't able to look it up. Uh, and then if we if none of those error cases trigger, then we can just return, uh, we can directly index into the tiles array and just return it with a true boolean to indicate everything went smoothly. Okay, so in our tile map package, we need to remove all the accesses to the pixel library. So sprites, batches, um, change the functions a little bit. And then back in our client main.go file, we can remove the batch as well from being passed into the constructor. And we don't need the rebatch function anymore. And then we can build our tile map renderer object by calling the render package dot new tile map renderer. And then into this constructor, we'll pass the sprite sheet. And we'll pass our mapping from tile type to pixel sprite. But we need to create that mapping first, so that's what we'll do here. So because this mapping is just going to basically hold tile type to uh, actual sprite object, first thing we want to do is, is uh, get all of those sprites. So we'll write a function. We'll create a grass tile variable. And we'll do sprite sheet.get on grass.png. And we'll check our error. And we'll do that exact same pattern for dirt and water. Now we can build our uh, tile to sprite mapping. So for grass tile, we'll pass in the grass tile. And then for the dirt tile enum, we'll pass in the dirt tile uh, sprite. And then for the water tile enum, we'll pass in the water tile sprite. Now that we've made our tile map render, we can actually batch it with, by passing in our tile map object. So now that we've written quite a bit of code, let's test it out and see if it works. But first, we actually need to launch our server uh, because we do depend on the WebSocket connection being opened first. Now we can run. Perfect. Or not perfect. We had some errors. So in the tile, new tile map render, I had forgotten to specify the uh, data type for returning. Uh, and then for tile map dot render, it's supposed to just be tile map render. And then I missed a colon and put a comma instead. Ah, uh, yeah. And then instead of tile, tile map dot draw, we want to do tile map render dot draw. And now that we've changed the tilemap.tile object, uh, we no longer need that. And then we have this batch object that's no longer useful, and these sprite objects are no longer useful. Uh, in fact, most of this function isn't useful anymore, so let's just uh, get rid of everything we don't need. And there you go. Everything's running now. Perfect. So we have a little bit of reorganization now, which is nice, um, but there's still more to do. Okay, now in our MMO package, I'm going to make a new file, and I'm going to call it MMO mmo.go. This will hold kind of like the initial starting point of our gameplay logic. So we'll specify it as package mmo. And the first thing we're going to add in here is our tile map generating code. Uh, so because of that, let's add in a few imports that we know that we're going to use, such as uh, the tile map package and also the procedural generation package. Then we create a function called create tile map. We'll pass our seed in, our map size, and our tile size. And the return for that will be will be the tilemap.tilemap object. Cool. Now we can copy paste some code from our main.go file and organize a little bit better. Let's just copy this whole chunk and paste it over here. And then in our create tile map function, uh, we actually want to pull tile uh, or sorry map size out and tile size out because those are going to pass in. And we'll call our create tile map function. And now we have this kind of common enumeration that will be shared across the client server. So let's copy that over to the MMO package. And that represents the different tile types we want. 
Then back in our main.go, we have this uh, get tile function that we were using in the past. Uh, we don't need that anymore, um, so we'll just delete it. So now that we've deleted that get tile function, uh, we'll just do tile map tile. We'll pass in the water tile. We'll do the same for the dirt tile, and the same for the grass tile. Okay, let's try to run our code. Yeah, and then there's a few uh, imports we need to clean up, such as removing uh, math from this package. And then we also need to add in the MMO package here too. That holds our kind of gameplay code. And then because grass tile is no longer in the client package, we need to specify that it's a part of the MMO package. So we'll do that for all three tile types. And then in the MMO package, I had forgotten to import math. And at the end, I need to return the tile map object. Oh, looks like it's working. Okay, cool. All right, well, it looks like everything came together nicely at the end there. Uh, there's a, uh, refactoring has a lot of uh, moving pieces, but uh, now that we're a little bit better organized, hopefully we won't have to do this too much more often in the future. Uh, the one last thing we have to do, but we're not gonna do today, is uh, we have this kind of common person object um, that has a lot of different components in it. And as we start adding different types of things in our game world, it'll be difficult to manage uh, specific types like people or trees or rocks. Uh, so we'll end up uh, building an entity component system to manage that for us, basically. Uh, so that'll be the next episode. And then uh, after those two, I think we'll have most of the organization out of the way. And then we can start actually writing some uh, heavy networking code. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this today. If you like this video and want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you have any feedback, leave a comment.